Good day and welcome to lecture 7-2 on localization. This is the final theoretical lecture for the quarter. Congratulations! So localization, as we've already talked about a little, is how a robot identifies where it is in the world. Localization and map making go hand in hand because it's important that you have an accurate map so that when the robot gets sensor data or odometry data, it can accurately determine where it is in the world. So localization is going to be discussed today, but it's going to be tied very closely to map making. And recall that your final project is going to be an integration of path planning, localization, and map making. The objectives of today's lecture are to describe exploration strategies and how they're used to localize a robot, to compare and contrast iconic and feature-based localization, to describe absolute and relative localization, and to discuss some of the ways to do localization, including Markov and Kalman. Since we are at the end of the mobile robotics theory in this course, I felt it was appropriate to revisit the robotic circle of life. We have examined robotics history, components, perception, representation, cognition, locomotion, navigation, path planning, mapping, and localization. This course has laid the foundation for more advanced study into various branches of robotics by providing this broad overview. The final project will, be a ser will serve as the cohesive demonstration of the integration of all of your newly acquired mobile robotics skills in building a complete control architecture with navigation competencies. The final two remaining questions in navigation are, where am I, which is localization, and where have I been, which is map making? They are closely related because a robot cannot create an accurate map if it does not know where it is. However, because shaft encoders are inaccurate, this was not always feasible. Where am I? One way for a robot to determine where it is, is to use odometry or path integration. Because of accumulation error, the robot will eventually need to recognize a landmark to reset the odometer. This is localization relative to the start or reference point. For example, a GPS map. Localization is also treated as a state estimation problem. State estimation is the process of estimating the state of a system from measurements. So if we notice here on the diagram, you have encoders, which are used to predict the position of the robot, and then you match that position to something in the world to update the position or the estimation, and you do that by having some kind of observation, such as a landmark of some sort. Localization categories. You have iconic base, which are used in an occupancy grid, certainty or evidence grid, which fuses sensor data into a world model or map, and fusion is done by an algorithm provided by a formal theory of evidence such as Bayesian or Dempster-Schafer or HIMM. Hybrid architectures use the occupancy grid as a virtual sensor that, and it's suited for metric map building. Another category is feature-based, which is suited for topological map building and is based upon the Markov decision process. You can also have odometry or you can use external sensors, beacons, or landmarks. Probabilistic map-based localization is also called Markov localization or common filter localization. Absolute and relative localization is based upon proximity to a reference such as a landmark or beacon and angle to a reference. It could be visual where there's a manual triangulation from physical points, or it could also be based upon time of flight, radio frequency, or a global positioning system like GPS, or it could be based upon acoustic, such as signal fading, electromagnetic, radio frequency. Relative localization is based upon, if you know your speed and direction, you can calculate where you are relative to where you were, which may involve integration. Speed and direction might themselves be absolute, for example, by using a compass or speedometer, or integrated, such as by using a gyroscope or accelerometer. Relative measurements are usually more accurate than the short term, but suffer from accumulated error in the long term, as we've discussed before with odometry error. Most robotics research seems to focus on this. 
The process of updating a robot position based upon proprioceptive and exteroceptive sensor values are separated logically into a general two-step process. Action update is proprioceptive and represents the application of some action model by the robot. And perception update, exteroceptive, represents the application of some perception model to the robot. Grid-based localization. Another strategy for position estimation is to do grid tracking. Place the grid on the floor with clearly identifiable cells. The robot senses change from one cell to another because the robot is equipped with a light sensor. The grid must be designed to distinguish changes from one cell to another. It must maximize the contrast between adjacent cells and the grid cells must be large when the robot moves faster. Here's an example of a grid-based localization. In this example, given the sensor data in the right map, you want to determine which of the four places on the world map is the actual location of the robot. Know that there is some sensor error because no location is an exact match for the sensor data. However, the closest possibility is the second from the top due to an obstacle one cell off to the left and right and an obstacle at the top right. Grid-based localization challenges. The advantages are you can reconfirm the location after short distances and you can eliminate errors within one cell range and it's simple to implement. The, dis the disadvantage is cell size limits accuracy and it requires many sensor readings and large cells for a truly reliable estimation. It also requires modification of the environment. And the results depend on the print quality as well as the sensor calibration.